Greetings everybody and today we're going to be deriving the Euler infinite product representation for the gamma function. So as always we're going to be starting with the good old Gauss representation for the gamma function. So gamma of z is equal to the limit, actually we have 1 over z first, so 1 over z times the limit as n approaches infinity of n to the z and then we have a product running from k equals 1 to n of k over z plus k. All right, so just like with the vice for us representation, we want to get rid of this limit. And the way we're going to do that is by turning this n to the z into some kinds of product. So we can combine it with this product and then just take the limit as n approaches infinity on this upper bound. So how do we turn this n to the z into a product? Well, instead of exponentiating it and turning it into base n or that like the Weierstrass representation, let's just take a look at n. So just n by itself. What exactly is n? Well, n, notice that's exactly um, 2 over 1 times actually 3 over 2 times 4 over 3 times dot 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 all the way up until n over n minus 1. And I hope you can see why this is true because you have 2 and 2 here which will cancel each other out. 3 over 3 which will cancel each other out. 4 and whatever's next will cancel each other out. And whatever's here cancelling with n minus 1. And you're just left with n over 1 which is exactly n. And we can turn this into a product. So n is now equal to a product. And let's choose an index. Let's call it k. And we're going to run k from 1 and let's take a look at this denominator to kind of figure out where k starts and ends so we have k which starts at 1 and then it's going to count all the way up until n minus 1 so on the denominator we definitely have k and on the top notice that the value on the top is just um, k plus 1 so k plus 1 over k uh, but this product is not that great and the reason is because the bounds don't really match up with the products we have here over here ideally we want this to run from 1 to n so let's multiply this by the term at n and then divide by the term at n so if we multiply this at the, by the term at n so if we plug n into here we're going to get n plus 1 over n and then we're going to divide by this straight away so we're going to have n over n plus 1 so the net result is just multiplying by 1, which doesn't really affect this. So let's combine this in. So we're going to combine both of these together. And since this is exactly the term at k equals n, n is now equal to the product as k equals 1, k goes from 1 to n of k plus 1 over k, and then we have n over n plus 1. All right, very nice. And now I guess we can just do a bit more manipulation over here. Notice that this n over n plus 1, we can um, split it up a little bit. So we have the product still. So product from k equals 1 to n. This is, we're definitely going to keep this because then we can uh, combine the products together. So we have k plus 1 over k. And then this, notice that n is exactly n plus 1 minus 1. So we're adding 1, subtracting 1 right away. So we're going to have n plus 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. And this right here is equal to 1. So our n overall is equal to this product from k equals 1 to n of k plus 1 over k and then we have 1 minus 1 over n plus 1. So this is exactly another way we can rewrite our n value. And we're just going to stick this right into this representation. I guess we should raise everything to the z power first. So we can enter the z. That's exactly this product raised to the z as well as this other factor raised to the z. But when you have a product raised to the z, um, that's a nice thing with using products. Um, you get the product of the thing inside raised to the z power. So we have the product from k equals 1 to n um, of k plus 1 over k to the z power. Um, and you can check that for yourself. If you write down a bunch of products and you can use the um, that property of exponential rules to um, distribute this z into every single product. And then we have 1 minus 
1 over n plus 1 raised to the zth power still. All right, very nice. So let's plug this straight into this definition of the gamma function. So if we do that, we're going to have 1 over z times the limit as n approaches infinity. Now n to the z, let's just literally just write that in. So we have the product. Um, in fact, I'll write this term first, just to make it a little bit nicer. So we have 1 minus 1 over n plus 1 raised to the zth power. And we also have this product running from k equals 1 to n of k plus 1 over k to the zth power. And we also have this product from k equals 1 to n of k over z plus k. And I want to do one small manipulation just like with the vice versa representation. We're going to take the reciprocal of this thing. So k over z, actually that's not the reciprocal, that's the same thing. We're going to have a z plus k over k and we're going to reciprocate the whole thing. And notice z plus k over k, well k over k is 1 and then we add it with a z over k. So we just have 1 plus z over k. All right, so let's try to continue on a little bit from here. Notice, I guess we should put this minus one inside. It makes a little bit more sense. But overall, we have a product times a product. So we can combine the two products together because their indexes are the same. The indices are the same. So we have one over z limits as n approaches infinity of one minus one over n plus one to the zth power. Then we have this product from k equals one to n of, now let's see, k plus one over k, k over k is exactly one, and then one over k is one over k. And this is raised to the zth power, and we divide this by, because we're taking a reciprocal right here, we divide it by one plus z over k. All right, so all that's really left for us to do is just simply take the limit as n approaches infinity. And notice on this factor over here, as n grows bigger and bigger and bigger, one over a really big number is basically zero. So we have one minus zero overall, which is just one. So this inside becomes one. And one raised to any power is just one. So we just have something multiplied by one, which isn't too interesting. And we're left with one over z. So this is equal to 1 over z. And then now we have the product, but because n is approaching infinity, we have an infinite product running from k equals 1 to infinity of 1 plus 1 over k raised to the zth power divided by 1 plus z over k. And this is exactly the Euler representation for the gamma function. So let's box that. And uh, we are done. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This basically ends my three-part series on product representations of the gamma function. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed these little videos. And uh, yeah, up until next time, have a wonderful day. And I'll see everyone later. Bye-bye.